Welcome to this lesson on shells, subshells and orbitals. First of all, you obviously know what this is if you're at this stage in A level. You know this is the, the standard model of an atom. But have you ever noticed, have you ever wondered why the shells, why the circles are drawn like that? There are 3D ways and there's 2D ways, but this is the 2D way. But why are they drawn like that? Why is there a line connecting two dots? Why are the line connecting the eight dots or uh, four dots in this case? Well, it's because these are shells. These lines are called shells. And shells are the orbit path the electrons take to travel around the nucleus. Just like the Earth travels around the Sun, this is the pathway in which electrons go around the Sun, and so on and so forth. The amount of the shells on the atom tells you what period the element is on. So for example, this has got two shells one two right and over here on this periodic table at ptable.com two shells means that it could be any of these elements on the second row the amount of electrons on the outer shell tells you what group the element is in and since this has got four electrons over here this is group 4 and this is the second row so by that means I know that this atom over here this element is called carbon also it, it has got one two three four five six electrons so therefore on the periodic table it should have six protons or six electrons over here as the atomic number. <laughs> Moving on, a subshell, because there are shells within shells, can you believe that? Subshells is the orbit path the electrons take to travel around the orbital. See, that's another word for you. You might be, you might not know what an orbital is, but we're going to go through an orbital just a moment actually well an orbital is a region of space within an atom that can hold up to two electrons with opposite spins again what's an opposite spin this is like an opposite spin if an electron is going this way an electron has to be going the opposite way they can't go they can't be going the same way like that that is not a spin and that is not accepted on for um for the electrons so this over here is the orbital or the space right over here okay i use the earth and the moon analogy just to explain a bit more but this is the um this is the orbital this is the subshell this line here this pathway the moon is taken is the subshell so in actual fact what i just told you on the previous slide was a lie technically was a lie because the electrons go around the subshell but the whole thing the whole um the whole orbital the subshell moves around the nucleus like so if you remember in year five or year six and you had that little animation of how the moon travels around the earth and the earth travels around the sun you'd probably get it so there are four types of orbitals there are the S, P, D and F orbitals, or the way I'd like to remember them, St. Peter does food, S, P, D, F. So this is what an S orbital looks like. It looks like a sphere. Do you notice the alliteration? S, sphere. That's how you can remember um, what the shape of the S orbital is. And they'll probably ask that in the exam. They can ask that in the exam. But... You should know that in any atom, any element everywhere, there is only one S orbital in every shell. And each orbital can hold up to two electrons. So let's say 
here's Electron 1 and here's Electron 2. Remember, this is a 3D shape, so electrons can be going that way and electrons can be going that way, or electrons can be going this way and electrons can be going uh, that way. It's a 3D shape. We do not know where electrons are heading at this stage of A levels. So all you need to know is that each orbital can hold up to two electrons. This applies to all the other three orbitals. All of them can hold up to two electrons each. P orbitals look like this. They've got a PX orbital where it's kind of like diagonal, a P, oh, a PZ orbital, more like, um, where this is um, diagonal, a PX orbital, which is uh, horizontal, and a PY orbital, which is vertical. And it looks like this. This is what it looks like when you put it together. Here's the PX, the PY, and the PZ. And basically, um, uh, basically, there are three P orbitals in every subshell. There's one orbital here, the other orbitals here, the other orbitals here. Remember, don't get orbitals mixed up with subshells. Orbitals are orbitals only carry two electrons. Each orbital carries two electrons. So, for example, this orbital here carries one, two. This orbital here carries one. 2 and this orbital here carries 1 and 2. So in total in each shell it can hold up to 6 um, it can hold up to 6 electrons in total. What I forgot to say is that over here this is the S block so that means when you're writing down the electron configuration you should know that this always will have always will end with an s orbital this always has an s orbital so for example hydrogen hydrogen has only got one electron but that's in an s orbital so you'd name that one s one because there are one electron in this first s orbital one electron in that first s orbital so if, if i say for example uh, let's go something easier. Let's go for um, beryllium. We know that the end um, orbital will be 2, because it's the second shell, S, because we know it's the S subshell, um, S block, 2, because there are two electrons on the outer shell. If you draw it, you can see what I mean, but obviously I'm not going to draw it. This is the same. This is the P block, or this is the P block, and this is on the right of the um, periodic table. So we've got boron, carbon, nitrogen, and all that, um, all of their families, and these are where um, the last, the last shell, the last subshell has um, has an orbital. <sighs> So applying it to here, this is the P block. This is located on the right hand side of the periodic table. If you look back at um, ptable.com, which is a fantastic website by the way for um, interactive periodic tables, this is this side of the periodic table, excluding helium by the way. Because that has an S orbital, it's got two protons or two electrons, so that will have an S orbital. These are all ending with a p orbital. So, for example, if I say boron, that's got um, that has got two p one because this is the first um, element in the p block. That's um, two s one and um, two p one. Sorry, two p two, two p three, two p four, two p five. 2p6, 3p1, 3p2, 3p3, do you get it? So all of this in group 3 always will have a p1, this will always have p2, this will always have p3, p4, p5 and p6.
the D orbitals. Um, by the way, they will ask. They may ask you to draw an S or a P orbital, but they will not ask you to draw a D or an F orbital because if you look at it, look how complicated it is. You do not need to learn that at the first bit of A level. But all you need to know that this is the D block. This is the transition metals over here, and there are five D orbitals in every subshell, and each one can hold. Each orbital can hold two electrons each, so that makes 10 in total, as we know. So, therefore, if we have a look here, this will be, um, this will be something D1, D2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So, if you look back at the period of the table, if we have a look at um, uh, silver, Let's say for example, this would have, this the end orbital will have five, okay, end subshell will have five, five, and this is the D block, so it'll be five D, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it'll be five D, nine. And Looking at the F orbitals, look how even more um, complicated they are. You do not need really need to learn the F orbitals because that won't come up in the exam. But all you just need to know is that there are seven F orbitals in every subshell, and each orbital may um, can hold two electrons because there are opposite spins. So that makes fourteen in total. So to recap, S orbitals have one um, subshell, um, one orbital in every subshell. A D orbital, so P orbital, has three um, orbitals in a subshell. D orbitals five and F orbitals seven. Can you see the pattern here? One, three, five, seven. Easy way of remembering it. And by the way, these are all of. Uh, these are all of these the ones at the bottom the ones which are lonely and have no place in the period of the table that's why they support by itself and that is it for sh um, shells ionization energies and well not shells ionization energies um more like shells subshells and the last one <laughs> orbitals <laughs>